Welcome to the Mechanics 1 lesson uh, about travel graphs. Uh, the aims of this lesson are to know the key features of displacement time and velocity time graphs and also to be able to uh, use a velocity time graph to calculate the average speed uh, for a particular journey. Uh, let's start with displacement time graphs. Uh, the graph you can see in front of us is split up into four stages. Uh, first part, second part, third part, and fourth part. So let's consider what is happening in the first stage. So in the first stage of motion, as we move uh, across to the right, uh, the graph is gradually moving upwards. So as time passes, uh, the displacement of the particle is increasing, so we'd say that we had a constant velocity. Uh, I should add that on the scales, so we always set a time going on the horizontal axis and displacement going on the vertical axis. So let's consider stage number two. So stage number two is this horizontal line going straight across. So what we've actually got at stage number two is a constant value for the displacement, which actually means that the object would be at rest. Okay, stage number three. So stage number three is actually very similar to stage number one. As we're moving across to the right, the graph is gradually sloping upwards. So again, we'd have a constant velocity. If we consider the differences, though, between stage one and stage three. So stage one has quite a shallow gradient sloping upwards, where stage three is actually a bit steeper. So this can actually tell us about the speed uh, that the object is travelling with. So for stage one, uh, the object will be travelling with a slower speed because the graph is shallow, and for stage three, the object will be travelling with a faster speed. Okay, and finally, stage number four. So what we've got for stage number four is actually a negative gradient. So the graph is sloping downwards all the way through for stage four. Uh, so this actually means we're traveling back towards the start uh, where the particle came from in the first place. Uh, the point actually here where it crosses the axis, uh, this you would actually be back at the start point. And the particle does actually continue beyond that point. Uh, so for anywhere down here on the graph, you would actually be in the, the negative direction away from the starting point. So for stage number four, we could consider it's still got a constant velocity. Uh, but we'd have a constant negative velocity. So what we'd mean by negative velocity is that we'd be travelling in the opposite direction uh, back towards the, the start uh, where the particle originated from and actually continuing beyond that point uh, the other way from the, the direction we moved in the first time. So the key points that you're expected to know for displacement time graphs. So you're expected to know that the gradient of a displacement time graph would equal the velocity. So the steeper the line, uh, the faster the object will be travelling. And if you have a negative gradient, that actually means you're moving back towards the start. Uh, you could also have to consider a curved displacement time graphs. So again, let's think about this idea of steepness. So if we consider the first curve, the one on the left, uh, at the start we've got quite a steep curve. So that would mean that we're travelling quickly at the start. And 
as time passes the curve gradually becomes more shallow so we'll be traveling more slowly towards the end so if we're traveling quickly to begin with and more slowly uh, to end we must be decelerating over time uh, if we consider the second curve so this starts off with a nice shallow curve so this must mean that we're starting off moving slowly and it gradually becomes steeper as time passes uh, so we must be moving faster at the end so we're starting off moving slowly uh, gradually moving more quickly so that must mean that we're actually accelerating as time passes okay moving on to velocity time graphs so uh, we always use a uh, time again on the horizontal axis and we mark the velocity on the vertical axis okay, and again we consider the different stages of the journey so if the graph is sloping upwards from left to right on a velocity time graph that would actually mean that we have an acceleration going on So the velocity is increasing as we move through time, so we'd be accelerating. Uh, this second stage along the top, we would actually have a constant velocity. There is no change in our velocity uh, through time. The third stage, uh, the particle is, the velocity is decreasing as time passes, so we'd actually be decelerating. So let's consider this first part of the motion to start with. Then. So sloping upwards would be an acceleration. Uh, a horizontal line would mean a constant velocity. Then sloping downwards would mean we're decelerating. Another property we can actually tell about the motion is if you consider the area. So the area under the curve will actually give you the distance travelled. So that's this first three stages of the motion dealt with. Uh, a bit at the end uh, is a similar situation. So this first part of the graph, we would actually be accelerating. In the negative direction. black part of the graph again is still a constant velocity and sloping back down towards zero would actually be a deceleration but in the negative direction We could still consider the area under the graph uh, to give us the distance, uh, but this distance travelled would actually be back towards the start. So the key points you expect to know about velocity time graphs. So the gradient of a velocity time graph equals the acceleration. Uh, a negative gradient means you're actually decelerating. The area under a velocity time graph equals the distance travelled and if the area is below the x-axis you're actually travelling back towards the starting point now, if you have a curved velocity time graph uh, this actually means that you've got a variable acceleration Uh, this is actually a much more realistic model for uh, motion we'd experience in real life. The graphs we just looked at with uh, straight lines making them up uh, actually don't allow for any 
change over time between one value and the next. So for the curve we've got here, starting up with a shallow gradient, so a low acceleration, that acceleration gradually increases, and it's pretty much a, a straight line for the middle bit. So there is a constant acceleration with part of the motion, but then the acceleration gradually decreases again at the top you know, until you reach this steady speed. Uh, the final thing we're going to consider is average speed. Uh, so we can calculate the average speed by considering the total distance travelled uh, divided by the total amount of time the journey took. So if we just conduct a, a quick example just to make sure that we've summarised all these points. So we've been given a velocity time graph. Uh, so this is the velocity time graph for a lift. So you've got this first stage where uh, the velocity is increasing. Uh, second stage, there is a constant velocity. And then third and final stage, the velocity decreases again. Uh, and we've been asked firstly to find the acceleration during the first four seconds. So we should remember what we just talked about. So if we want to calculate the acceleration. That is going to be the gradient of the line. And from your car maps, you should be happy with that the gradient is the change in y over the change in x. So our change in y would give us a value of 3, and our change in x would give us a value of 4. So that would be 3 quarters, or we could write it as 0 0.75. And that's acceleration, so it'd be uh, meters per second squared. Right, part B. So part B has asked us to find the distance travelled by the lift. So if you remember, the velocity time graph, the distance travelled is going to equal the area on the river. So we could treat this as um, a trapezium, uh, but it might actually be more simple to split it into the three separate shapes. So we've got a triangle, a rectangle, and another triangle. So the first triangle, so we need to do a half base, so a half of four would be two, times by the height, which is three, so that's going to give us an area of six. This first triangle. Uh, the middle section. So it's going from 4 seconds to 7 seconds, so that is 3 seconds wide. But it's also got a height of 3, oh, so it's actually a square. So 3 by 3, that uh, gives an area of 9. And the final triangle, um, so again that's 3 seconds, going between 10 and 7. 3 high. So 3 3 is a 9 and half of that, so that will be 4 point. So to work out the distance travelled, we just need to work out the total of those. So 6 plus 9 plus 4.5 is going to give us 19.5. And that will be 95 metres. Finally, part C. So we've been asked to work out the average speed. So the average speed around the total distance divided by the total time. So our total distance we just calculated, that was 19.5 metres. The total time we can read off the graph would be 10 seconds. So we do 19.5 divided by the 10 seconds, it's going to give us 1.95. And that will be meters per second. So that concludes uh, the first lesson on travel maps.